Welcome back to me vlogging my experience of the Advent Submotion 1 course and this is week number 2 as you can see from the title. My name is Marika and I'm in a really good mood right now because I just had my weekly mentor meeting and it went well and it was fun and interesting and and this week has been fun. I just had so much fun animating and learning and uh, I love the bullshit. Okay, so this week's task was bouncing balls and swinging pendulums. And we were supposed to animate three balls with three different kind of weights and two swinging pendulums. One lighter one and one that's heavier. Yeah, and that's what I did. At least that's what I tried and then kind of did and then did and did not and it was all over the place but I've learned a lot and I had fun and I did a lot of bouncing balls and swinging pendulums and I didn't film every single try. Um, however, I'll show you the ones I wasn't happy with and the ones I was happy with and the ones that I gave to my mentor eventually and tell you what he said about them and what his advice was to me. Um, so here we go! So this week's task was animate a pendulum with two different kinds of weights. One should be lighter, one should be heavier. The second task was animate three different kinds of balls, also with different weights. One very light one, like a beach ball, then a medium one, like a tennis or football, or soccer ball, and a very heavy one, like a bowling ball. Okay, so as you can see, I started with making a pendulum. I figured animating pendulums is easier than bouncing balls and I was correct, so that's why I started with the pendulums and of course I needed to make one first. So here you can see how I'm making the smaller one and I decided to decorate it a little bit just because I didn't want it to look completely plain and just like a blob of clay. I hated the first flourishes I put on it so I decided to go for a flowerish thing, whatever, it doesn't really matter, nobody cares. I was just checking if it has enough room to move around and this is the finished pendulum. Here you can see how I'm animating a medium weight pendulum and I think it was actually the easiest one to animate because kind of all you have to do is decide how heavy it should be. Like just imagine in your mind what you want it to look like and what the pace should be and then you just apply the rules of animation to it. Smaller spaces for slower movement and bigger spaces for faster movement. I think it gets trickier when you actually know what the pendulum is and where it is and what it's made of and what the purpose of it is because now I could just literally do any kind of way that's kind of medium and not too heavy. If it's like something that's on a clock for example or if it's a child on a swing. Both of them are swinging but they have a different kind of weight to them. In this task I could just choose how heavy I wanted it to be as long as it was like kind of a medium weight. This is what one of my attempts looked like but I didn't like it as much so I tried it again and gave a little bit more heaviness to it. Oh and as you can see the clay was staining my paper so I would not recommend using clay on cardboard. Yes, and then I needed a heavy looking pendulum and I thought I'm just gonna make a bigger one to make it look heavier from the get-go. Yeah, really fascinating stuff happening here. Um, yeah, then I felt like decorating this one as well and I'm not gonna explain why I wrote always on it and why the A looks the way it does. Um, when you know, you know. So when that was done, I started animating and here's another time lapse of me doing exactly that. For me, animating the heavier one was harder than animating the lighter one. And as you can see later on, it also goes with bouncing balls. Just in general, animating really slow movements is harder than animating fast ones. At least that's how it is for me and how I have also picked up from other animators. I always speed up my animations by 4 or 5,000% and I thought I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I'm animating in real time because it's slow. I'm just moving the pendulum like a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Sometimes the movements look like they barely even exist, but when you do them and you look at the animation later on, it is actually moving just really, really slowly. This was my very first attempt. As you can see, it's moving very unrealistically and it's not a smooth movement. It doesn't look like it's actually heavy. And then tried it again and this is what the result was. This one, I gotta admit, I really do like because I think you can really feel the heaviness. And then I think this is the coolest thing about animation because you can literally take anything and make it look like anything. I could just grab a balloon and make it look like it's as heavy as a bowling ball. 
or grab a bowling ball and make it look like it's as light as a balloon. Stop motion is so cool, isn't it? Just a little information, I'm editing the vlog at the moment and we just had our weekly Zoom meeting in the morning. And next Monday, on March 1st, Arpen will be giving a Zoom meeting for everyone who's interested in maybe doing the course. Just planning to get more information about it, to ask questions. Mark Hewis is always holding the meeting, who's also doing our meetings from the course every Wednesday morning. So there's a chance for you to get to know him and just get a feeling of what it's gonna be like if you do the course. And I will also be there with other participants of the course um, to just answer your questions if you have any. So if you're interested in talking to someone from Artman about the course and to us, go to Artman's website, sign up, it's for free obviously, and you'll get a link for the Zoom meeting. See you there. At this point, I was officially done with the first task, animating two pendulums with two different weights. But I was thinking, okay, how hard is it when you have to animate two things at the same time, which I've never done before, and give both of them different weight and also make them interact with each other. So then I took both of my pendulums, put them next to each other and tried to make it look like the left one is pretty light and the right one is really heavy. I wanted the light one to hit the heavy one and just make them react like they actually have this weight to them. This was the first try and I don't completely hate it, but when you look at the right one, you can see it stops moving way too quickly and in an odd way. And the left one also just stops way too abruptly and is not swinging anymore. It just goes from left to right, left to right, left to right. And then I tried this again. This one looks better, but Obviously, it's still not perfect. And my mentor, Darren Thompson, who I have my weekly feedback sessions with, yeah, just agreed with me because we both could see it doesn't move naturally in the end. And the larger one on the right is just holding its place too long when it's at its highest point. So you just kind of have the feeling like, come on, move already. And that's just one of the things we said we don't really like about it. So when I try this again next week, we'll see if I have improved or not. I gotta do the second assignment, which is <laughs> bouncing balls. And I need to make some balls out of this. This is rock solid. Um, so I need to warm this up and make some balls. Alrighty, moving on to bouncing balls. And like I said, the clay was really cold and rock solid. It took a long time for it to be warm so I could actually work with it. <laughs> At first I was trying to just hold it in my hands and make it warm, but, um, but I ended up just putting it on my radiator, which really helped. And I googled if I could just put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds, but everyone said, don't do it, it's gonna melt. So yeah, I just had to be patient for a little bit and just sit by the radiator and wait for my clay to get soft. One fun fact is that Artman apparently has one, I don't know what you would call it, like a container thingy where you can just put loads of clay in it and it warms it up for you so you don't have to put it on a radiator, which is probably a good thing to have when you're doing a feature film and you need tons of clay. So when it was warm enough for me to work with, I formed three identical balls for one animation. And as you probably know, balls squash and stretch when they hit the ground to bounce up and down. And I just thought it would be quicker if I just prepare the different stages of squashing of the ball and just replace it whenever it's necessary instead of just having one ball that I need to form into different shapes while I'm animating. Here they are, the three little cuties. And there's one good thing that Darren pointed out at the feedback session. I don't know why, but I shaped my squashed ball more like a rectangle instead of an oval and it obviously doesn't look like a squash ball so that's one thing I need to change when I redo the task. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, it just looks bad. And here's another time lapse of me animating. Are you sick of it yet? Yeah, I don't blame you. One thing I could have done to help me out with the animation was to go on Dragon Frame, that's the software I'm animating with, and draw the arcs on the screen before animating so I would know where my ball needs to go. However, I decided not to do it this way because I don't want to rely on a guide, because I rather want to be able to animate by feeling, meaning I want to be able to see it in my head and just move the pieces how I think they should be moving in order to look good. What I did instead was just using my finger before animating and just mimic the arcs I was envisioning in my head and to check if I even have enough room for this. And here's my very very first bouncing ball ever I've done an animation. And as you can tell it does not look like a ball. There should be just gravity doing its thing. However the 
ball clearly has a mind on its own and it's more like a little character that's jumping up and down and not like a ball that has been thrown and bounces up and down like it would naturally do. And then I tried it again and tried to put less character in it and try to make it look like an inanimate object, which as you can see kind of worked but not really. Um, I mean it's better than the one before but it has still too much character in it. I don't think it has enough to be an extra character, but it's also obviously not a realistic ball. That's my observation of my problem, that I'm mixing two things at the same time, making it look like living thing and an inanimate object at the same time, which clearly doesn't work, so I have to try it again next week. The next ball I animated was a bowling ball, and yeah, here you can see me make a ball and put holes in it, super exciting, blah 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 blah. Moving on. So one surprising thing that I've learned was when looking at reference videos of someone dropping a bowling ball, it actually jumps up pretty high after the first time it hits the ground. After that it behaves like you would actually expect from a bowling ball. The first drop is pretty high. Not as high as I did in this animation which is clearly too high, but for me it was still the easiest ball to animate. I didn't film myself animating the beach ball, so no time lapse for you here. But here are the finished animations. They're both not really good, as you can tell. It doesn't look like a beach ball. It looks again like it's pushing itself off the ground. And in the second one, it just squashes way too much when it hits the ground. Also kind of looks like the ball has its own power to push itself up. And Darren also said it's just falling down too slowly. That's the tricky part, because you're trying so hard to make it look light and make it move slowly but then you're in danger of making it look too slow and then you're just like ah, what am i doing here so animating the beach ball again is definitely something i want to do next week again in addition to the new task we're getting i don't know what it is yet i just want to make sure that i really master the basic basic foundations of animation and i don't want to just move on and be like yeah it'll be fine i can do it better next time because that wouldn't make any sense why would i become magically better if i don't practice and that's why I'm going to do this over and over and over and over again, just to make 100% sure I really know what I'm doing. Because, yeah, I don't really just want to be an okayish animator. I really want to become just very, 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 very good. <laughs> that's the goal and that's honestly why I'm doing the course in the first place. Yeah, as you can see, I had a lot of fun. I was way less nervous about handing in my animations and talking to my mentor this week. Which is great because now I can just start to enjoy everything and now I'm less nervous but way way more excited and just looking forward to every week and I'm really curious about what next week's task will be. When you do the course you get an armature sent from Artman and it looks like this. Um, it's made from Animation Toolkit. Unfortunately due to Brexit and Covid um, it's been sitting at customs for over two weeks now and it's really not Arvin's fault because they're actually trying really hard to make sure everyone gets their animation toolkit. It's just bad luck because there are people who live way further away from England than I do and they received their armature a while ago. There's nothing we can do at the moment. All we can do is just wait for customs to clear the package. I think that we're starting to animate with characters next week and that we need the armature to do the animations. However, I'm lucky because I own a sticky bones figure that I can animate with in case my package doesn't arrive on time. Yep, that's pretty much it for the week and I hope next week I get to animate a character and hopefully my package arrives so I can show you how I'm building the armature because it comes in a box of loose pieces and we actually have to build it ourselves. That's gonna be fun or absolutely frustrating. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye! Thanks for watching. So here we go. What was that? <laughs>